Good morning, everybody. This is Dee Reinhardt. I am welcoming you to our webinar this morning, and I'm proud to present our guest speaker, Peggy Luce, with Year of the Volunteer. Thank you for joining us, Peggy. Well, I'm glad to be here. So let's get started with our presentation. And Peggy's going to uh, talk to us today about the volunteer services and the Year of the Volunteer. Well, we want to thank Illinois WorkNet for providing this opportunity. The Illinois 2015 Year of the Volunteer designated August as the month to recognize volunteers who impact workforce development. This webinar will look at examples of businesses and not-for-profit organizations that support those volunteers. We will explore how volunteer service complements one's business, professional, and technical skills and expands social networks. Uh, I'm Peggy Luce, a volunteer for Generations Serving Generations, and I am its work group leader for the August theme of Business and Workforce Volunteers. So what is 2015 Year of the Volunteer? The Year of the Volunteer is a time to celebrate the accomplishments of the 2.6 million volunteers in Illinois and strengthen the systems in Illinois that support volunteers. It's a time to tell stories about ways volunteers enrich our state. It's a time to strengthen the way volunteer programs are organized, managed, and connected. So how did it start? The year started with a nonpartisan Illinois Senate resolution in 2014. Senate Resolution 1002 is a call to action to recognize volunteers and what they mean to our communities and neighborhoods. Generations Serving Generations prepared the resolution and worked to get Senate support. Generation Serving Generations is a public-private partnership sponsored by the Illinois Department on Aging and Serve Illinois Commission. The Senate agreed that it is important to retain current volunteers. The current retention rate is about 64%. We can boost that. During the year of the volunteer, it is our hope that the events and publicity about volunteers will result in individuals who aren't serving as volunteers knowing that they are welcome. Now, that's roughly 64% of Illinoisans, or 7 million potential volunteers. So why is uh, the year so important? Imagine Illinois without our volunteers. Overall in Illinois, in 2013, 27 percent of residents volunteered. Illinois ranked 26th among the 50 states. We can do better. 2.6 million volunteers perform about 320 million hours of service. That's about 120 hours per year for each volunteer, or about two hours a week. But let's look at the dollar value of this service. 320 million hours of service is $7.2 billion worth of service. The 2015 state budget was about $66 billion. So volunteer services are adding value equivalent to 11% of the total state budget. So the appropriate tagline for our events and publicity is, you are the difference. There are about six major categories of places where people volunteer. Religious or faith-based organizations have the most, followed by education and social service organizations. Months of 2015 have a volunteer theme aligned with these categories. Each monthly theme brings attention to groups where people volunteer. For example, February's theme was faith-based organizations and March with education organizations. We kicked off the year as a volunteer on Martin Luther King's birthday. Governor Bruce Rauner joined City Year members Chicago Mayor Rahm Emanuel and Scott McFarland of the Serve Illinois Commission for the National Day of Service and the launch of the Year of the Volunteer. In December, we will report on the infrastructure of volunteers. Think of this as a sharing 
uh, best practices on how volunteers are recruited, retained, and managed. As I mentioned, faith-based organizations provide the largest number of volunteers in Illinois, roughly 36% of all volunteers. I'd like to share a few examples of volunteer service from faith-based organizations that provide workforce development assistance. Jewish Vocational Service, or JVS, recruits volunteers to supplement its staff services. JVS says, for those who are currently employed, this is a great way to help others. If you are currently unemployed, volunteering is an excellent way to gain important resume building experience. JVS volunteers help with English as a Second Language tutoring, resume development, and practicing job interviews. Another example is the Jobs Partnership Peoria. This program operates largely through the power of volunteerism, providing employment and training services to adults transitioning out of incarceration. The partnership has programming in three Illinois cities, nine state correctional institutions, two programs in the federal prison system, and three programs on the county jail level. In 2014, there were 637 graduates of their program. There is only one paid staff member, but there were 72 volunteers who logged 14,000 hours. This equals an in-kind value of $300,000 if the volunteers had been paid average wages for their work. Lutheran Social Services of Illinois also has a program targeting incarcerated adults. The Prisoner and Family Ministry serves those who are incarcerated, their families, and people released from prison throughout the state. Each year, the ministry touches more than 9,000 prisoners and their families throughout the state, from Dixon to Lincoln to Marion. The Diocesan Employment Resource Center is a very different model. It's called DIRK. DIRK is a ministry of the Joliet Diocese. Parishioners volunteer to facilitate job networking groups at individual parishes. DIRC job seekers find the help they need to learn how to look for a job in a competitive market and get the tools to put together an excellent resume coached by accomplished seasoned professionals. Volunteers help job seekers find leads and encourage networking. Job seekers look through the different ministries to see which one best suits their needs. The March theme was education. Education attracts the second largest number of volunteers, 26.4%. So let's look at just a few diverse examples of education volunteering. The Illinois Mentoring Partnership is one of 26 affiliates of Mentor, the National Mentoring Partnership. The Illinois Mentoring Partnership serves as a clearinghouse for training, resources, awareness, and advocacy, providing the critical link between mentors' national efforts and local organizations. The Illinois Mentoring Partnership is committed to helping the over 200 youth mentoring programs currently operating in Illinois to ensure that their programming meets national best practice standards and to help them find the volunteer mentors. Mentoring programs range from a one-on-one -on -one weekly commitment with a single youth to much more modest commitments of an hour or two a month together with other mentors with a small group of youth. The Tutor-Mentor Connection also serves as a community resource for information about tutor-mentor programs and a portal to other tutor-mentor resources and organizations in Chicago and beyond. It hosts two conferences a year where youth programs exhibit to recruit volunteer tutors and mentors. Chicago Lights is an example of one-on-one -on -one service. Last year, Chicago Lights volunteers provided more than 81,000 hours of one-on-one -on -one tutoring and mentoring to teens facing poverty. 
It's run by the Fourth Presbyterian Church in Chicago. Chicago Scholars prepares high school seniors to get into college and then helps them until they graduate from college and get a job. It has a successful history of recruiting company mentors for its college-bound scholars, especially from the members of Chicago United and Chicago Society of Human Resource Managers. Chicago Scholars also gets companies to host interns and people in the company volunteer to mentor the interns. I'd like to wrap up talking about faith-based and education volunteers with a true story about volunteer experience leading to employment. Jean is an authentic career professional in post-secondary and secondary student advising. When budgets were cut during the recent economic downturn, she took a position outside of her field. She did keep her hand in with students, continuing her service as a volunteer in Christian ministry for university students. Being very creative in getting their attention, she invited small groups of students to cooking classes in her kitchen where issues of faith could be discussed informally while cooking and eating. Jean finally took the plunge into unemployment to seek a job within her career field. With her time a little flexible, she decided to volunteer for a phonathon fundraiser at a faith-based institution of higher education. While on its website to sign up as a volunteer, she got into the career pages. There was a job she knew she would like and the Human Resources Department offered in-person interviews one afternoon a week. So she applied for the job, volunteered for a, phoning of, a morning of phonathon, and went to Human Resources in the afternoon for an interview. A few mornings later, while ta taking a break with fellow phonathoners, a faculty person approached her asking if she was the Jean that applied for the job because he wanted to talk with her. When I met up with Jean two months into her new job, she was radiating. It was so obvious that she was working in the right setting for her and would have a positive impact on her colleagues and her students. Our themes for April and May focused on leveraging citizen service. April's theme was mayors and municipalities. It focused on initiatives supported through the Corporation for National and Community Service, the National League of Cities, the Cities of Service, and Serve Illinois. The theme for May was Older Americans to coincide with the 50th anniversary of the Older Americans Act. Programs throughout Illinois report how volunteers help older adults stay active and independent and how volunteering by older adults is a mainstay of that independence. A nationwide program is Retired Senior Volunteer Program, or RSVP. RSVP enables seniors 55 and over to give back to the community by volunteering for different nonprofits in their local communities. Seniors are matched with local nonprofits seeking volunteers. For example, Lutheran Social Services of Illinois leads the RSVP in Boone and Winnebago counties. The theme for June was volunteers in health-related organizations. Volunteers improve the health of our communities in many ways. They are indispensable in hospitals and clinics. Volunteers throughout Illinois make it possible for people to have a hot meal in a soup kitchen or by distributing food in pantries. And how about physical fitness? Little league and youth sports depend upon volunteer coaches. Volunteers organize and participate in walking and running events that raise funds for research and care. Volunteers get involved in evidence-based health projects that are vital for improving health. So let's look at a few Illinois health examples. Through the Catholic Charities Diocese of Springfield, Meals on Wheels are delivered by volunteers five days a week in Decatur. In Alton, Car Carlinville, Decatur, Effingham, Mantoon, Quincy, Springfield, the diocese has 
food pantries. For a business example, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois hosts an annual volunteering expo for its employees. Blue Cross Blue Shield welcomes not-for-profit organizations to its volunteer expo. Agency representatives meet with hundreds of enthusiastic Blue Cross employees willing to become volunteers. Their volunteer time is seen as a wonderful complement to their Blue Cross work and the agencies that share their commitment to providing individuals with the support to achieve and maintain a healthy lifestyle. Earlier, we mentioned how Chicago Society of Human Resource Managers helps Chicago scholars. Many professional and industry associations have well-organized programs for their members. The American Dental Association Give Back Locally is just one example. ADA says volunteering and providing community service can be one of the most fulfilling aspects of a career, even contributing an hour to speak to local preschoolers about the importance of brushing can make a difference to oral health. Participation at local high school career fairs is encouraged. One of ADA's high impact programs is Give Kids a Smile. Events take place at thousands of locations across the United States using a combination of local volunteerism and support from the ADA Foundation. Through Give Kids a Smile, dentists provide free dental care to children from low-income families who otherwise would not receive preventative or restorative care or oral health education. Again, I'd like to share a true and recent story of a job seeker's volunteer experience. This experience led to skill retention and new capabilities. Mary had a 20 plus year uh, career with a prestigious telecommunications company. Her diverse background utilized strong communication, organizational and problem solving skills to manage assets, coordinate projects, plan events, and train employees. This global corporation valued her multicultural experience working, studying, and traveling internationally in 23 companies. When her mom's cancer accelerated, Mary made the difficult choice to resign from her asset inventory manager job that required long hours and a long commute. As Mary says, it was truly a blessing to be able to help her and my dad. I was able to take on all aspects of caregiving, including management of medical calendar, medicine intake, wound care, patient advocate, bills, nutrition, driver, household cleaning, cooking, shopping, and moral support for my father. Mom didn't go into hospice until the last five days. When Mary's mom passed away, Mary had been out of her career for over six months. She had to fast track her job search. As part of the Wisconsin Food Share Employment and Training Program, she began volunteering at a day center for adults with disabilities and started taking online courses. The volunteer service led to temporary employment assignments. Again, in Mary's words, volunteering has given me purpose, has raised my esteem, allowed me the opportunity to retain skills while learning new skills. My project management background led to my suggesting significant process improvements for the center. My diverse volunteer and temporary work assignments included access database, donor perfect donor management system, mail merges, country of origin, and NAFTA knowledge. The volunteer organization has recognized that I have been an asset to them and it's been a win-win for both sides. I met Mary at a jobs-driven networking group in the greater Chicago area, and we hope she will be offered a long-term position soon. The July theme was democracy. To stay on the topic of business and workforce volunteers, we'll focus on volunteers serving on boards, committees, task forces, and commissions. But for all volunteers, I want to mention the Illinois Civil Immunities Good Samaritan Act. The act established numerous protections for the generous and compassionate acts 
of Illinois citizens who volunteer their time and talents to help others. These protections, or Good Samaritan provisions, have been codified in many acts of the Illinois compiled statutes. The Good Samaritan Act recodifies existing Good Samaritan provisions. And in summary, without limitation, the provisions of this act will be liberally construed to encourage persons to volunteer their time and talents. The volunteers serve on state and local boards, committees, task forces, and commissions, bringing the voice of the residents to programs and plans. A good example is the Illinois Workforce Investment Board that guides the local workforce investment boards and local workforce centers. To make appointments at the state level, the governor needs a current pool of outstanding volunteers to serve on boards, committees, task forces, and commissions. You can nominate yourself for an appointment in an area of your interest. There is a list available, and that list is kept up to date by the Office of Executive Appointments. And on that uh, website is a link to the nomination form that you can fill out. You may have heard of national community service programs without realizing their source. Through the Corporation for National and Community Service each year, more than 5 million individuals of all ages and backgrounds help meet local needs through a wide array of service opportunities. The core programs are AmeriCorps, Senior Corps, and Social Innovation Fund. These programs support projects in six priority areas, disaster services, economic opportunity, education, environmental stewardship, healthy futures, and our veterans and military families. Moving on, the August theme of business and workforce volunteers has been a pleasure for me to work on. I've collected several articles from companies and from professionals that will be printed in the next issue of Continuance Magazine. Every year, volunteers from large corporations and small businesses contribute time and expertise in their communities and neighborhoods. Also, people who are unemployed and underemployed volunteer and they find their niche. Skills-based volunteering allows employees and unemployed to use the skills they've acquired to help others. Skills-based volunteering for employees is a type of employee engagement that can favorably impact a company's employee recruitment and retention rates while helping businesses stand out in a competitive market. Small Business Big Purpose is an ebook that helps employers tap into the skills of their employees so employees can turn their passion into purpose and their skills into impact. Small businesses can also take the pro bono benchmarking survey to better understand how their pro bono program measures up on community impact. Earlier, we mentioned Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois hosting an annual volunteering expo for its employees. Accenture has a very different approach. The Accenture Corporate Citizenship Initiative encourages employees to volunteer at organizations that have been vetted by Accenture. Accenture employees nominate organizations for consideration where the organizations can benefit from Accenture's Skills to Succeed activities. Skills to Succeed equips people with the soft skills that open doors to employment and economic opportunity. The volunteers' tasks are not foreign to the Accenture volunteers and require little advanced preparation. Skills to Succeed and its sister program, Empower to Employ, need volunteers with expertise to do resume reviews, mock employment interviews, confidence building presentation, public speaking, and project management. Accenture's people are performing these types of activities in their everyday work with clients and within the company. 
Another approach used by many companies is a one day, one annual day of community service that all employees are encouraged to participate in. For example, annually on one Saturday in April, Comcast Cares Day brings its employees, their friends and families, together with local nonprofit partners to make change happen in hundreds of local communities from coast to coast and abroad. The Comcast Cares Day includes more than 80 volunteer projects spanning Illinois, Northwest Indiana, and Southwest Michigan. So what are the themes for the months ahead? In September, we'll look at volunteers in emergencies and disasters. In October, we'll look at history and heritage. Think of the volunteers in libraries, museums. In November, the November is focused on volunteers helping our veterans and military personnel. We should mention here that Executive Service Corps of Chicago, an organization of volunteer expert consultants, has been engaged with Illinois Joining Forces. Illinois Joining Forces is a new central resource for Illinois veterans and their families. It is being designed, with the help of the expert consultants, to centralize the sea of goodwill being offered by a variety of sources and allow returning veterans and their families to tap into one source for a variety of needed services. We hear about students of high school and college age being required to perform community service. The service learning impacts on students have been carefully researched and documented. Students have demonstrated greater self-esteem, self-efficacy, outlook on personal abilities, and feelings of control. Students become more engaged and enjoy classes more. Students report having heightened feelings of altruism, civic responsibility, and current and future voting behaviors. Students were more apt to act as leaders, show cultural competence, and solve social problems. Community service students earned higher grades and test scores. In wrapping up how volunteer service impacts employees and people in transition. Let's review. We heard some true stories from recent job seekers. We looked at examples of companies valuing volunteer time as an employee engagement activity and as part of its corporate citizenship and social responsibility. For additional volunteer stories, visit the websites of organizations. Junior Achievement has great stories. And look at Volunteer Match. For updates and contacts for 2015 Year of the Volunteer, visit the Facebook page, Year of the Volunteer. Most of our updates will also be on the Serve Illinois website. And please be sure you are receiving the Illinois WorkNet emails and take a look at WorkNet's resources about volunteer services. Thank you for joining me today, and here is Dee Reinhardt for our closing of the webinar. Dee, can you take over now? Thank you so much, Peggy, for joining us. Uh, you did a great job sharing all of that information. I hope our listeners will learn more about volunteering opportunities and understand the importance of them to, to their career and the growth of their career. While we are closing up and looking for any questions or comments from the audience, um, we do have some links here. The Year of the Volunteer, we have the link in the top. They, uh, our participants can go there. And then I have a link for all of the volunteer resources that are available on Illinois WorkNet, as well as the link that you just added to uh, have them be able to help serve. The information that Peggy has shared will be available on our YouTube channel and our and our uh, 
website so that you can access the PowerPoint that she presented and get all of those links if you do need that. So thank you very much for joining us today. I'm going to end the recording and ask that you would complete um, the, the, the uh, quiz 